John, now that the uh, preseason slate's over, you guys have a week before your, your first game. What's the uh, the game plan in terms of, of prep? Are you guys going to focus more on kind of the stuff you did today, or is it more systems? Today was systems. Um, systems, conditioning, everything that we do. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch upon everything. Is, is this part, like, are you guys still evaluating in these practices, or is that pretty much done? No, the evaluating's done. We're... we're Obviously, we're pretty close to our group, and uh, really, right on through camp, we've been doing quite a bit. We, we started our systems a lot earlier this year uh, in camp, and uh, we've been going through that right on through. So we just continue. Where do you guys feel like you're at? I know you mentioned, I think this was actually at the start of camp, about the systems, and you said that just necessarily you guys are going to have to change the way you play a little bit because guys have grown, guys mm -hmm. have gotten to know your system. It seems like there's maybe a little bit more of an offensive bent this mm -hmm. year in terms of risk taking. Yeah. How do you communicate that to the guys of what's different in terms of last year versus this year? Yeah, and for me to go into what's we we need to basically we need to change our mindset a little bit, and we need to score goals. Well, I wouldn't say change our mindset. We you still have to play the right way. Uh, you still have to play away from the puck, uh, but I. I I guess I shouldn't say I. We, we, we want to give them some more freedom in 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 trying to make plays. Uh, um, a, as I said to him last night, uh, we we don't have a a superstar offensive player. Uh, some teams have a couple. Uh, some teams have one. We don't. We we still have to manufacture goals, but we still have some good offensive people here, and we want to. Second year into it here, uh, I think we have an understanding how to defend, uh, what's expected of the standard of defending. We want to grow our team into uh, not being afraid to try to make a play. Now, to answer your question after I say that, I do have to police that. Uh, uh, trying to create offense and trying to make plays, you can't cross the line and be an idiot about it, you know? And that's what I'm going to have to police. But uh, you know, they're, they're, for, for for them to feel confident and, and to grow offensively, I do think I need to turn away sometimes and, and just allow. Uh, if I see something that, I mean, what's he doing there? Maybe I just need to leave it alone. And uh, those are the things I have to police myself with, and I have to police them with. And so that's a that's going to be ongoing here. But we have to create more offense if we want to try to stay competitive and. Uh, a lot of the drills today were based on that, and um, we'll see where it goes. Talking to Morgan Frost today about the fact that this is the second year under you, and, and uh, it seemed that, like times last year that he wasn't quite sure what you expected of him. But this year he said, I know what he wants of me, and I think that'll make a difference. Do you see that out there so far? Well, I, 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 we've talked about this uh, you know, as a group uh, for a couple times now in these sessions. It, it, I have to change as a coach the, the second year because I uh, some some there's more trust. Uh, uh, some of it is I just understand the athlete a little bit better. Some of it's on their part too. They understand me a little bit better. So that that, that just evolves. Uh, I, I think a coach has to evolve with a team, and the team has to evolve with the coach. So I, I think that's what Frosty's saying. Um, I always I always preface that's great. But the standard of how hard we play, that will never change. And, and that is going to be a constant with me uh, for these guys. And I, and I think they've kind of bought into that. We, we made strides last year there in uh, how we have to play as far as the hardness is concerned. Uh, I, I think we've got a group uh, uh, that we have a lot of people that drive the bus here now in that part of it as far as how hard you have to play. I think some additions to our lineup just through free agency is going to help us there. Um, so I, I think that's going to be seamless. And so things do change year to year as you grow together as a coach, coaching staff and players. Joel Farabee had a healthy offseason this year after dealing with the neck injury last year. I'm kind of evaluating his camp and preseason as a whole. How valuable do you think that that offseason was? To yeah, yeah, it, 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 was, uh, it, was, it was so important for him. And I think Cootsie's going through it now mentally to just to know that he's able to go full bore, has a full summer under his belt as far as training. 
Um, he's had a good camp. Uh, I, I, I think he's an important piece as far as, uh, you know, now there's some kids maybe of, uh, arriving here. It, it gives you some balance within your lineup. He's a, a huge piece there because he can play left wing, right wing. I think he's even played a little center. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think he's more clear headed, I hope, and that he knows he can go and he knows he's had the proper training. He's put on some weight. Uh, and, and I think that's really important he's, as he progresses as a player. So uh, right now all signs are pointing up with him. It, it's just a matter of him staying together and, and, and staying about his business and going about it the right way. Talking about the, uh, the fourth line, last night they were all over the ice, and, and it seems like for, for you that that trio, it's important for you guys to – it's important for you to try to help this team build an identity mm -hmm. for them to kind of lead the way. By the same token, you got two young guys in Forster and Brink that are mm -hmm. really strong cases to make the team, mm -hmm. but if that fourth line stays together, only one of them probably can fit in the top nine. So mm -hmm. how do you balance the, the decision of wanting both those guys, if they're going to be here, to play versus wanting to keep that fourth line together? Yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, you, I think you always equate that if, if one of those guys uh, um, – is going to stay here. It's going to affect uh, losing a player off. I, I think that's what you're saying. Well, more, more just like you've got eight guys in the top nine, eight yeah. veterans, and yeah. then you got two kids, and then you have the fourth line that probably because it's played so well. They're staying together. together. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, so something else has to give, right? Exactly. If, if need be, something else gives. I'll put it to you that way. It. it I'm really. It, I'm really happy with how they they've gelled together as a line. I, I, I think they feed off of one another. I think. I think Nick is going to probably lose a little penalty killing time, but I think he's probably going to gain some five on five time uh, playing with that line. So, again, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I won't make the decisions as far as what happens with the lineup until we have to play Columbus, but then something else has to give. And so we'll see where it goes. With regards to, to Brink and Forrester, these are obviously young guys. You guys want them playing. Mm -hmm. But would you, and maybe this isn't a question you're able or willing to answer, but would you be willing to almost keep both of them and kind of trade them off in the early season? You know, if one guy gets one game, mm -hmm. one guy gets another, or do you want both of those guys playing every game wherever they are? No, no I don't think it has to be every game. Okay. And, and so it, it uh, you know, th that's that's one avenue if, if we feel uh, that both of them deserve to be here, that's an avenue we can go to. Uh, again, we haven't haven't gotten there yet, uh, but no, it, it, it and, and Charlie, that's the call we have to make each week, you know, as far as how they're playing. I, I want you to understand when we want to play the kids, we do, but if we're putting, the, putting these young players in, in a spot that we think is hurting their development, they will go down, and those are the decisions we're going to have to make weekly as we go through. Let's say Bobby ends up playing for us, right? Maybe five or six games into it, it might be a little bit rich for him. I don't know. Uh, those are the decisions. It's just going to be constantly evaluating them. And it doesn't have to be every game, no. Uh, but it, 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 it's something we have to watch because I, I, it, the, the stage we're in as a team, uh, yeah, great, say play the kids, play the kids. But if we're hurting the kids while we're doing this, then we have to step back because that isn't the right way to go through the process. So that, that's all – it's probably going to be a constant question, and I understand the question, but that's going to be have to be answered all year long because that's going to be a constant evaluation of where they are and how they're going about it. It's only the preseason, but have you noticed a difference in special teams so far? And because Scott Vaughn said just having guys like Couturier and McCam out there changes the dynamic a little bit, makes it everybody a little more confident. Do you, do you see yeah, that? yeah. I, I, uh, I, I certainly have uh, – many more penalty killers uh, available. And we've got to figure out what the pairs are going to be with that. It changes the dynamic of a power play on, on both power plays because there's more bodies. And what if Brink and, and Tyson are here? Uh, it, there's, a, there's a lot of different things you have to go through. I, I, uh, I think they're just starting, like I, I've used exclusively that pail of, uh, of paling and, and Hath on a penalty kill because I think that's going to be a group. Uh, Coots is going to kill. Cam's going to kill. I'm not sure what the pairs are going to be. So we're we're trying to find a, a kind of a template there. Uh, I don't think we've totally got there with the penalty kill and power play, but there are, there are many more bodies available to give us some 
uh, options as far as how we want to go about it. Okay, thanks, okay. thanks, John. Thanks.